the impeachment trial begins yet again. Uh, this time, a former president, Donald Trump. Now, today is very interesting, and I think it will be actually one of the most interesting days for the next uh, likely six, seven days. And that's because there's a short time, only four hours, so two hours each side, to debate whether or not this is constitutional at all. If a majority of the Senate says that it's they don't have constitutional jurisdiction, that would be it. That would be the end of the trial. Now, we do anticipate Democrats will probably strike that motion down and it will proceed. The Constitution of the United States does not permit late impeachment. It is silent on the issue. Had they intended to permit late impeachment, they would have said you can be impeached for events occurring while you were in office after you've left office. That is not the case. That is not the historical case, number one. And more importantly, it is not the textual case. What's interesting in the next phase of the trial is the Democrat position that the First Amendment doesn't really apply here. That's actually the position of the House managers, is that because this is a political trial, the president doesn't just have First Amendment rights, so he's not. it's not governed by freedom of speech. I, I, I heard Alan Dershowitz, I think he made an excellent point, that we have no religious tests in our country. So then could you impeach a, a, a elected president or elected a, a, a cabinet member because they were a Muslim? Could you impeach them because they were a Catholic or a Jew? Uh, and, and even though that violates the Constitution because it's an impeachment trial? Because that's a, that'd be the same thing as what they're arguing is that the First Amendment doesn't apply. Something called the First Amendment to the Constitution, which is the freedom to express yourself and the freedom of speech, okay? The uh, president's lawyers have articulated that very carefully. If we're going to apply some of the Constitution, but not all of the Constitution, then we have violated all of the Constitution. They are saying uh, specifically that the president failed to uh, preserve and protect and defend the Constitution, violated his oath, and that he engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors, and this is the key, by inciting violence against the government of the United States. So incitement, uh, violence, it would be, again, it's it's somewhere in between um, sedition, which is kind of the words and actions that incite the insurrection. And that's what they're saying he did by saying, go to the Capitol, you got to fight. But we use these terms. I mean, all politicians... Uh, Than, how many times do you hear politicians use the word fight? We should protect that unpopular speech as well, Jordan. I mean, look, all violence should be condemned. Uh, we've roundly condemned what happened on January 6th, as well as previous acts of violence against both sides. Uh, but Jordan, look, if you look around the world, it's the places that don't allow dissenting speech, that don't allow aggressive debate. Those are the places, Jordan, where people don't have freedom. I'll read you the constitutional provision. Um, when the president of the United States is tried, the chief justice shall preside. That's it. It doesn't give him any space to make the decision. The chief justice has sent a very strong signal. I'm not going to be a part of this. Don't come to me. This is not a valid trial of a president of the United States that I'm going to preside over. Some unsettled issues. For instance, can Kamala Harris break a tie? That might not come about. There may not be a tie-breaking vote. But on witnesses, which I think is, again, for our impeachment, I think for this impeachment, is the big tell. Not for who's if the president's going to be acquitted or not, but for how long the country's going to be dragged through this. It's a political stunt that really, it doesn't take the welfare of the nation or the unity of America or a new chapter in American American life into, into account at all. The only witnesses, for example, that they have called is Donald Trump, which is proof that it's a political stunt. You think anybody's pers- persuaded at this point on the other side to say, you know what, now that I've heard this, now that I've had time to think about it, Maybe this is a bad idea, or do you think it just remains as partisan as it has been for the most part? You're not going to get one Democratic vote to say that there's no jurisdiction, and the five angry Republicans are going to stay five angry and wrong. By opening this door, even if it's ultimately acquittal, they've opened the door. The Democrats have never been serious about the rule of law, the text of the Constitution, um, or due process, unless it favors them politically— or in terms of political theater. For the country, Wes, it's, it's, we can all talk about it, we can laugh, we can cry. It's mostly a cry moment. For the Democrats to, to actually come up and say enough is enough would require some honor and integrity that their political motivations are overpowering. They simply will not do it. This is absurd. This is a former president. I mean, who is on trial is the question uh, that I think they all have to answer because the chief justice is not there, so it's not the president. It's all of us that supported President Trump. 